So now that we're dealing with strings, we have to be aware and be mindful of one specific thing, that a string is known as a complex data type. And we've heard this kind of term before. We probably heard that, uh, say, ints, uh, doubles, even chars, that these were all considered primitive. But we didn't really kind of understand what that meant. We just kind of smiled and nodded and went, uh-huh, okay, primitive, whatever. So what does this idea of complex data types mean? Well, it means that we don't get the luxury of doing basic comparisons. You know, one of the things that we could do with an integer is say 10 greater than five or five equal equal s, x. We don't actually get that luxury here. Uh, say for example, uh, I had a string yes, that just equals the word yes. And then I get my user's input. I get some uh, input dot next line, because I'm asking my user, do they want to play again or not? Well, you'd assume that these things would be able to equal out. I would be able to do yes equals input dot next line. And this should, are, you know, if they typed in yes, you know, we'll assume that the user typed in the word yes, that this would be, uh, this would actually print out true. Nope, nope, nope. Wrong, ladies and gentlemen. We actually, because they're complex, that actually takes a look or that runs into an issue. And before I kind of get into explaining that, let's take a look at that. So I've already kind of built out that code for us. You know, here's that yes I was talking about. Here's me saying, do you want to play again? Getting my user's input. And if these two things mean the same thing, then I should be playing this game again. So compile it up. Do you want to play again? Why, yes, I would love to. No, no fun for you. You'll get no fun. So what do we do? How do we, well, what do we, how, why does this even happen? Well, let's take a second to think about uh, our stick of memory for just a bit. With a traditional int x equals five, this actually goes well, I'm gonna just take that five and just store it in memory. The five is just gonna be stored in memory because an integer five, that's not very big. You know, it's 32 bits and only about two of those are gonna be ones. So that's actually very small in the grand scheme of, you know, a uh, world where we have eight gigabytes of data or 16 or 32 gigabytes of data. Say, for example, you know, I want to do now x equal equal 5. Well, I grab the value out of x, which happens to be the same location as the number 5. Equal equal actually looks to see if they have the same memory address. And with primitive data types, this is perfectly fine. It's perfectly OK because, as you can see, uh, we don't run into any issues. We've been doing this the entire time. But when we look at a string, as you can see, a big no. So what do we do? Well, now what we have to do is we have to take into account the fact that we're dealing with a complex data type. And that str, or actually that play again. Let's say we made a variable that we stored their stuff called play again. Now instead of doing equal equal, what we would say is dot equals yes. And that's going to prove to be true or false. So let's take a look at that code again and let's actually change it up. Instead of it being equal equal, I say dot equals yes. Now remember, I made yes up here, stored it up here. So now if we take this code, and now if we run it, 
do you want to play again? Why, yes, I do. Yay! We get to play again. So something we have to be mindful of when we start to deal with these more complex, that big word again, complex data types.